This video was sponsored by PCBWay. In the last video, I made a supersonic gas turbine with the mission to demonstrate that I can design a power source for a rocket engine. The next thing on the list would be to design something that could extract the raw energy from a violent combustion process and turn it into propulsion. That sounds like a rocket nozzle. There are three types of rocket engines. Solid rocket engines that burn a premix propellant combination in a designed and expected way. Liquid rocket engines which burn two or more propellants in a design mixture to get high working fluid or exhaust temperature and low molecular weight. And of course, hybrid rocket engines which are dark. For this project, I'm going to design a solid rocket engine because it's the cheapest and easiest way to get the specific combustion properties required for a rocket engine. For the oxidizer, I'm going to pick potassium nitrate and for the fuel, sugar and sorbitol, which is very similar to sugar but it's safer to work with. I chose these chemicals because they are cheap, easy to obtain and I already have them except for the sorbitol. If you like rockets, you might know about these propellants, in fact you might have already tried it yourself. For viewers who are less familiar though, this propellant is called KNSB, which I think stands for Potassium Nitrate Solid Booster. I don't wanna bore you, so I won't go in depth into how I designed the rocket motor. Knowing the mixture ratio that I wanted to use and the propellant burn rate, I was able to get the nozzle dimensions pretty easily using a great tool I had at my disposal called RPA. I used that and not my own program I made some time ago because RPA is also able to calculate combustion temperature and exhaust molar mass automatically, factors that were unknown to me beforehand. So after I got the dimensions, I opened Fusion 360 and designed the motor. It didn't take much effort before I had a ready-to-machine model. All the components were CNC machined by local machinist. A quick story. The parts were expected to be done in two weeks, However, for some reason, those two weeks turned into three months. This delay wouldn't have happened if I ordered from today's sponsor, PCBWay. Not only do they move fast, but they also have a large variety of services such as CNC machining, injection molding, PCB manufacturing, all sorts of 3D printing, and many more. Also, their prices are very low when compared to other options. Just for example, thanks to PCBWay, one of my big upcoming projects will cost 240 euros instead of the 400 euros that would cost to be produced here locally. Also, they can pull off some pretty low tolerances. I mean, check out my last video if you don't believe me. So head over to PCBWay using the link in the description to make your next project a reality. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and now let's check out those parts. Everything looks great. There is a slightly bigger gap between the motor tube and the nozzle than I expected, but that's my fault because I didn't tolerance the dimensions properly. Now the only thing that was left to do was to fire the engine. I did this in a village since I normally live in an urban area and firing a rocket engine in a city wouldn't turn out well. On the way, I thought of every possible way that the engine could explode. I was most concerned about the cap leaking or coming off the motor during the burn or even about the tube exploding. I couldn't think of anything else the whole trip, even though I should have thought of these things before designing the engine. Regrets aside, as soon as I got there, I got to work. I started by making and casting the propellant grains. Here, I got into pretty big trouble because the propellant was more viscous than expected. 
This gave me the idea to order some sorbitol, which I heard was similar in energy to sugar, but it melts at half the temperature. This would allow me to decrease its viscosity by getting it to very high temperature before casting. And by high temperature, I mean about the melting point of normal sugar. Back to the test fire. The propellant grains I got were still pretty bad since they were still mostly empty. Regardless, I got a test fire that day. The fact that the engine even worked is amazing. After I got home I saw that all the o-rings survived except the one between the cap and the tube. It wasn't anything serious, it was just slightly burned on one side. You can even see that the gas leak left a discoloration mark on the cap where the o-ring should have protected it. After I cleaned the parts from the propellant residue, the only part that looked like it has been test fired was the converging side of the nozzle and that one spot on the cap. Okay, so I wasn't planning on recording this, but my sorbitol just arrived and I can get it completely into frame, but it almost looks like it was meant to go in the rocket engine. So yeah, that's nice. And it's a pretty fine powder too. I'm sure it will burn well. I was feeling very optimistic about this orbital idea. This time I was gonna go prepared. I brought a scale, I made a test, a test stand, I was going to film with two phones at daytime, and I made upgrades to the propellant casting equipment. If everything was going to go to plan, the average thrust should be about 40 newtons, so I should read about 4 kilograms on the scale. I made a test batch of propellant containing only sorbitol and potassium nitrate. Seeing how well that burned, I decided to remove the sugar from the final mixture, thinking that it would create viscosity issues when uh, pouring the propellant into the molds. When I saw how well the new propellant poured into the molds, I knew that the grains will be fine. Indeed, after the sorbitol solidified, the propellant grains looked perfect. The only thing left now was to assemble the engine. As you can see, I used a lot of grease to make sure that there were no leaks during the burn. After fixing the nozzle, I placed the propellant grains inside the motor tube and screwed on the cap. Let's see how the new propellant does. And friends, this is why this channel is called RUD Technologies. The reason we even do tests is to learn from them, so let's draw some conclusions as to what happened. As you probably saw, the combustion wasn't nearly as energetic as the one from the last test, in fact it wasn't even able to ignite the second grain. I had to physically go to the engine and light up another igniter in order to fire the other grain. When I went to do that, I could see a huge amount of carbon deposit on the nozzle. This indicated that the combustion was fuel rich, since the potassium nitrate doesn't contain carbon, 
so the only possible source of that was the sorbitol. When I got home and disassembled the engine, I saw that it was filled with char from the sorbitol, so the combustion probably produced more solid deposit than hot, than hot gas. Fortunately, after I cleaned everything, the engine looked like new. This time all the o-rings survived, in spite of being exposed to a longer combustion. Some ideas for the future would be to cast the sugar propellant in an empty mold and then bore a hole into the middle of it using a power tool. Or to use orbital in a reduced concentration as in the original plan. For now this is everything though. If you liked what you saw make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm currently working on a very big project so if you would like to support me directly you could buy something from my online shop. I would be thankful. Thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.